a business building warrior. It's your friend, Jim. It's another episode of Silent Sales Machine Radio. Today's guest is a coaching student from Jim Cockrum Coaching, and he has an incredible story. He started off about four years ago with a credit card with a $500 limit. And as of right now, he's expecting to do about $7 million this year, just four short years later, selling his products on Amazon. He's used the Proven Amazon course and our coaching program to build an incredible business. And it was such an honor to get him on the show today. It started out as a simple post in our Facebook group. We see this frequently. And he was sharing his numbers. He had had uh, more than a quarter million dollar month And he was just sharing a screenshot and showing his business, thanking our team, thanking the coaching program, thanking the community, which was a huge part of supporting him. That's right. Our free Facebook group is behind a lot of these success stories. So if that's all you take advantage of as a fan of this show is our free Facebook group, well, you're very smart because there's a lot of really smart people in there, way smarter than me with businesses more successful than mine that have built incredible things over the years. And I just love being in a group like that where we welcome in the new people. We answer your questions. It's a very warm, inviting arena. We've built a community. We've built a culture. And I want you to be a part of that. Cameron talks about that a little bit today, how important that was to him. But I love that he started off in a three-bedroom apartment with two roommates and he was using his bed as his prep desk to send products into Amazon. And here we are just a few short years later And he's got a 20,000 square foot warehouse that he's filled up with six people that work for him. And they're selling $7 million on Amazon. And the sky's the limit. He's looking at nothing but growth from here forward. You're going to enjoy hanging out with Cameron a little bit today. I'm going to jump over and get him on the line now so you can hear his story in his own words. So Cameron, welcome to the show. Yeah, Jim. Hi, great to be here. It's... uh... An honor to be on the podcast. I've been uh, looking forward to this. I um, started coaching and now I'm on a podcast, Success Story. So it's uh, excited to go over everything with you. Man, that's great. I, I love that you were a coaching student, came through our program, and thank you for agreeing. I know you're a busy guy. You've got a lot of things going on. I think pretty much all of our guests on this show have gone from starting somewhere fairly... Um, I don't know, average or at maybe even very humble beginnings and have built some pretty incredible businesses. And that's what makes this show so interesting is just all the different stories behind these incredible success stories. And yours is certainly one of them. You've posted and shared some details with us in the Facebook group, and I'm excited to hear more of your story. So I'm going to turn it over to you so I can hear along with the listeners, you know, tell it, take us through your journey. Yeah. So I'd say it started, um, 2016, I actually was working a full-time job and a corporate job. And I was looking for an out in that. I've always wanted to uh, be my own business owner. So I had been working for one of my uncles in his basement. He was doing Amazon. And um, so I was like, okay, geez. I saw how things were going. And I was like, I got to get into this. And uh, it wasn't long after I'd gone to Vegas to ASD and actually saw you speak. Um, you did a seminar. And... Um, at that moment, after that, I got back, and I think that was in February of 2016, I believe. And um, in March, I had gotten in touch with the coaching program and proceeded with that. So from there on out, then on, it's just been full speed ahead. That was kind of when I know I had been taking notes at the seminar. And uh, so I signed up for the Amazon. And believe it or not, this business, um, I started with a $500 credit card. And with we, what was that again? Uh, you started with what? I started with a five hundred dollar credit limit on my credit wow. card. Wow! Um, <laughs> and then great. working out of my apartment, working two jobs, and um, I basically—it's uh, just—it's crazy. So the, the the biggest thing I've learned, and I want to stress, is um, a lot of people pay themselves too much too early. Mm, and that's good. I would buy one box and take the profits and reinvest in the next time I bought two boxes of inventory. And I so on and so on and so on. So now that as of 2018, we buy nothing less than a pallet. Um, and most pallets we're ordering truckloads or containers. Um, so as long as you keep reinvesting and you're smart and 
don't pay yourself too much and you reinvest all of the majority of the profits back into the business, then you're set up for success. Um, if you do the opposite, I mean, you can still get there, but it's going to take longer. Um, yeah, the, the math is way friendlier if you, you know, there's a hockey stick effect that kicks in. It, correct. It, you, can, you can delay that hockey stick for a long time if you're paying yourself the whole time till it starts to ramp up. But if you do, like you suggested, just keep putting the money back in, you can do it correct. very quick. And then you can start paying yourself really a whole lot better a whole lot sooner versus yes. dragging it out over time. I mean, that's just the way the math works because this, this business does scale over time very quickly. Right. And I love that you point out, and I'll say this, once people grasp the, stu- the stuff that we teach around here, they run out of money before they run out of profitable inventory. Correct. Would you agree with that? Like that's your limiting factor is how much, it, where can I go find more money? Because I can, if I could find more money, I can turn those $5 bills into $10 bills, but I just need more money. Definitely. Yeah, that's the challenge. Um, and it's funny you bring that up. I, I saw somebody ask me this I, on my post in the My Silent Team. Um, they had asked the question or something had come up and I was responding. I was like, yeah, reinvesting um, the profits. And um, I completely lost train of thought there. <laughs> no, that's uh, it's talking about running out of money before you run out of Yes. So that's, that's, that's right. So the product sourcing, this is, that's the category of what I was getting to talk about. Um, they asked me the question of, do I import from China when I first sourced my first product or the U S so still to this day, 40 years later, um, I am a hundred percent committed to trying to source my products in the U S first before importing from China and China to FBA. Um, because that number one allows you to test the market to see if there's viability for the product. And number two, if it is successful, then you know it's successful, it's gonna sell, there is a demand, then you can take it to China. Um, The biggest reason for this, or at least my number one rule, is because getting a product from China, yeah, you've done your research on it, but not knowing if it's gonna sell, you're, way, you're going to throw away way more money on shipping and the product because you're going to have to order more versus eating the cost and not making a profit buying from the States first and just testing it. Yeah, um, I love so that. that is always, and as a general rule, I mean, that's what we coach around here. We, we coach and teach a very low risk way to success, meaning I would much rather see you test out 10 locally sourced, easily sourced products quantities of two, three, five, and then find the one or two winners among those and go a little deeper versus buying tools and doing research and going to China and getting a crate full of product that you were like, oh, this is it. This is my big win. And you're right. testing, your first round of testing is a major commitment of time, energy, effort, tools that you have to pay every month for and you have to justify the cost of And then this order that's going to take forever to get over and probably sit on a dock somewhere longer than you were expecting. Like that's not the way to build your business. There's courses out there. There's experts out there that teach that. But the strategy you're talking about is far easier. It's test small, find winners, go a little bit deeper. And you look back over your shoulder, you've spent a lot less money and you found winners way quicker. And you didn't need to spend time, tons of time doing research and complex software it is testing. And now I don't know how you've built your business. I haven't dug into it deeply, but in general, that's what we teach around here as right. the, the starting point for most people. And it's built some pretty incredible businesses, yours included. But you keep Definitely. your story going. I want to hear the timeline here. Yeah. I, uh, so March uh, 2016, joined the coaching program. And um, from there on, I just testing products and testing products. And it was myself. And in 2018, I mean, I would say within the first year, year and a half, I finally hit that million dollars in sales uh, by 2018. Uh, so less than a year and a half. A year and a half in, million dollars yeah. in sales. And for the skeptic out there with their arms crossed and they're, they're wrinkling their eyebrow right now, well, what did he, he put in the bank? What was his margin? Okay, let's help that guy out. <laughs> and I mean, a lot of people don't realize, I mean, the expenses, there's tons of expenses, right. um, whether it be labor or... One of the, I will point out one of the issues that I had uh, been dealing with myself was um, control of the business. So, and I know a lot of people may not talk about this. 
What I have learned and I'm still working on is outsourcing and delegating tasks. Um, Because no matter what anyone thinks, myself included, um, and I'm sure you could agree, is no one can run one business by themselves. Um, If you want to grow, that is. And so that's one thing I had struggled with. And uh, 2018, I had brought on a business partner. um, And since then, everything has just been great. Um, Delegating tasks, outsourcing. I still need to outsource a few things that I haven't done. And I'm I'm just now working on China to FBA. But um, this year, there's been a little bit of a a, a speed bump, um, whether it be the limited restock issues with Amazon. And I believe that just came back out this morning or yesterday, um, coming up through the holiday season. But um, And we are, surprisingly, um, on target to do about... 7 million this year. And, and that's within the first four years of having the business. That's incredible. Um, and gross revenue. So, but, but help me out. The, the, what's, what are your margins? That first million dollar year and now with 7 million, like, you know, what's your, what are you so banking can, after all this is over? Yeah. So I can give you for our products in general. Yeah. Um, so for our products, we're aiming for and so with all the expenses, it's just kind of hard. Um, but with products, we aim for forty percent, but we have some as high as sixty percent, um, and the lowest I believe we have is thirty five percent profit That's margin. That's ROI. That's after everything. Yes. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Um, buy cost, FBA expenses, and a good way that we find that information, and you're probably familiar, is we use the tool RevSeller. Yep. Um, pops right up on your uh, product page. Um, you your high cost. It's one of the favorite tools. I'm making myself a note right now. Actually, um, a lot of people love RevSeller, but Correct. we met them early on. The the guy who who created it, and, and his name escapes me right now, but he gave our community the best price you can find on the planet. If you go to provenamazoncourse.com slash RevSeller, R-E-V-S-E-L-L-E-R, RevSeller you'll see that the uh, price is ridiculously lower than you'll find it anywhere else. So yeah, I love that you gave them a shout out. They're not a sponsor of the show or anything, just a, a really great tool. And they gave our, our community a great discount. So that's a good way to snag that. Um, Definitely. Because it'll, it'll show you exactly you say how much money am I going to make? If I, go, if I buy this product right now, what am I going to make? What can I expect to make? And Correct. so you're saying 40, 60%, man, that's beautiful. Yeah. And, um, which is very high for like for, for online, especially. Oh, um, you hear a lot, plenty of people who are thrilled with, 15, 10, 15%. Correct. 10, 15% yes. on a $7 million business. That's not bad after all expenses. That's a living Correct. for sure. And that's 15%. I, I don't know the exact, I would have to look. Um, sure. I would say it's just with every, all the expenses, warehousing, labor, and, mm-hmm. um, but. Well, um, it, it sounds like you could use someone to really help you dive in. Do you have a, a good accountant? I do. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, they, they'd be able to, so they know, they're on top of it. They know. Correct. It sounds to me yeah. like everyone's getting paid, getting paid well, and you're putting some money in the bank. Your balance Correct. is growing, right? So yes. Amazon is impressive been- business. Sure. Talk us through your, um, in the early days, how would you find profitable products? And now, has that strategy shifted at all? So what strategy were you using before? What strategy are you using now? And oh, it was how many different, uh, the question Correct. is how many and different students. types of products. Like, do you just have a handful of winners or do you have multiple products that you're... So I would say for the first two years, we, we really relied on one product. Um, and then 20, around 2018, halfway through the business from then until now, we really ramped up. So we have a total of around 250 SKUs, um, but we are heavy on variations. So I'm not sure if a lot of people prefer variations, but we probably have about 10 to 15 good products and then just hammer it out on different variations, whether it be size, color, um, quantity. But um, I like, that's another one of my methods is I like to take a product that's doing well, ranking well, and then I wouldn't per se hijack the ESR, but um, they have good BSRs, good rankings, good reviews, and then create variations onto that listing so that it just sticks with the ranking that's already um, Ah, working. Gotcha. That is, that's one good little tip that I would get. That's one of my little tricks that um, I know Amazon is kind of cracking down on that. Um, Variations, whether people have taken advantage of combining old products to build up the review count. 
Um, so that has played an effect to where SKUs now will just show their product reviews when you click on it instead of the full um, parent SKU. But uh, that, that's kind of where we're at now. And um, we have not added many SKUs this year just because we've already had a, a bunch of issues just with everything going on uh, logistics-wise. And then with Amazon kind of restricting um, new products and inventory limits. So that's put a little bit of a damper on putting new products up and trying to keep what we have in stock. Sure. Uh, so your, some FBA limits have, have impacted you. Do, you. do you do any merchant fulfill? you ship any product yourself? We do not. So I did when I first started, um, but now we're doing such high volume with FBA. Um, I mean, we get something in, we're prepping it and it's sent right out. Um, so we're not fully set up to do merchant fulfilled at the moment. Um, we it have sounds to me like there's some opportunity there for you. Correct. Because um, you're one of those have... products that's selling really well, but Amazon is putting the brakes on how much you can send them and how much they'll move because they're focused on other categories. And Amazon is, I don't want to say they're broken right now. They're, they're hobbled right now. They've hired a couple hundred thousand people in the past few months. So they've got a lot of, a lot of people out there don't know what they're doing yet. They're ramping up. Inventory gets lost in the warehouse, which I'm sure you've had that experience with that. You know, uh, but yes. if you control the inventory yourself and fel- sell through their system, it's just a matter of putting the right team in place and finding the space. It sounds to me like you could justify that expense very quickly from my vantage point. And Correct. So and we have before. looked into that. Um, some of the issues that arise there are just kind of, I've, I've done some testing on it, are the size of some of the products. Um, but that should be something that could be resolved. So we are looking into that. Uh, where we would probably bring on a few new team members. We do have six full-time uh, employees. I, I haven't mentioned this. Um, we have about fifteen to 20,000 square foot at our warehouse. Mm. And um, we're pretty much maxed out. <laughs> so we're hoping to get a little bit extra room. And then that would be maybe something that we can look into. Because um, right now we're just kind of stretching thin on our, our space. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, when you started out, was it just you out of your own own place? It was. Uh, sorry, I skipped that. Uh, no, I'm just curious. Like, you know, yeah, you said $500 yeah. on a credit card. I'm curious, like 20,000 square foot warehouse has got to be contrasted pretty significantly with a guy with 500 bucks on a credit card. <laughs> so it, I was, I was living when I first started the business, I was living in a three bedroom apartment with two other guys. Um, and I was literally working out of my bedroom. So I would, I would just fill the inventory out on my bed and package it out accordingly and then uh, label and then put back in. I was buying boxes at Walmart at the time. Um, that wouldn't really work now because we're ordering boxes by the pallets. But um, just to see where I have gone from. And then I, it got to where I wasn't sure how the UPS pickup worked at the time in the post office. So I would make daily runs packaging, filling up the car, um, whether it be post office or UPS and, um, hauling them from the, I think at the time, the 16th story of my apartment building down to my car, load the car, go down the garage, UPS every day, five days a week. Um, and to now just 20,000 square feet and they come and pick it up from us. It's, it's, it's a blessing. <laughs> That's so um, great. And in just a few short years. Yes. How, how has it impacted your outlook on like a day-to-day basis? Like when you got out of bed on a Monday back then versus now, like, can you contrast that? Is there a difference? Like where were you before? Maybe even before you did the Amazon thing, like how has it impacted you personally? Just the way yeah. you approach your week. I, I think very beneficial. Um, just looking back, waking up and being like, oh, I have to go be at work at 7.30 and drive 30 minutes to get there and sit in an hour of traffic on the way home to now barely driving five miles a day, if that. Um, I do live in the city, so that helps a little bit. But um, it definitely, and I would say from working in the apartment, that was a little more stressful. But I can't say that it's less stressful now because there's a little more to manage, um, be it employees and shipments getting lost. And just there's, there's a wide variety of things that 
could go wrong at any moment, um, but you just have to take it as it comes and make mm-hmm. the best out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but as uh, overall, I mean, it's it's just amazing waking up and just being, having a to do list and tackling that and just being able to do things at your own pace, um, which is That's a fantastic. thing that a lot of people want to do. Yeah, and it's it's a sellable asset. You've built a business that could be sold. Correct. I mean, it, it, it is, you, you should probably have it evaluated at some point, just have that number in the back of your mind. It's like, hmm, I could walk away for a pretty nice chunk of change right now and <laughs> Correct. do something different if I wanted to. You know, not that you're considering that necessarily, but you've got the skill set to go a lot of different directions at this point, and including, yeah. you know, being a consultant, helping other people do this sort of thing, and um, just being an e commerce expert, maybe write a book, who knows, right? That's Definitely. awesome. Though. Congratulations. Man. Things. Yeah, I appreciate it. So where do you want to go? Where do you want to see your business like, you know, a year from now, let's say? Um, I don't know. I just, I like the way it's going. And, and it seems, it, I don't know if it's just uh, organic, um, but it seems like it just doubles every year. And maybe you could chime in on this. It, it Just organically, whether it be product reviews or the BSR or ranking, um, without doing the ads and the extra stuff. Um, Maybe the sales volume affects that. It's just a whole different thing of factors. So it's one of those things where anybody that's getting started, they're like, oh, I'm not doing much now. But if you keep your listings going and you get more sales and more product reviews, it's just going to keep doubling and doubling and tripling, quadrupling, um, just like a chain reaction. So that's one thing that keeps me excited. I have thought about doing other things, um, which I still could do other things, even with the business. Once you get it to the point where it operates on its own, which is what I'm working on, the, the delegating task. And so that all goes back to, uh, to working on those kind of things. But um, there's, there's all kinds of things. I, I definitely would like to possibly get into helping other people because I know there's a lot of people that want to get into this, this kind of thing, um, e-commerce and definitely Amazon. But... I think a lot of people too wanted to happen. I was I was the same way as what I'm about to say, but a lot of people too wanted to happen overnight, <laughs> and it just it doesn't work that way. And I was the same way when I started, but I would. I, it's just one of those things. I was working seven days a week, ten to twelve hours a day. I I wouldn't go out on the weekends. I would stay in while everybody's out having fun. I would. Um, it just seems like building the business was more important to me at the time. But now that I, I put that time in, then I can kind of take that extra time now and relax or travel or, um, and not have to worry about it because I know I have people taking care of everything for me. That's awesome, man. Yeah, you put in, I, I call it that period of intense focused effort. Every business needs that. It's going to be inconvenient. It's not going to be fun. You're going to have to shift around your priorities, your entertainment time, your social life for a period of time. And right. that, that tells me you're a disciplined guy, you know, that uh, yeah. you have the ability to dig deep and say, the things I want to do today, I'm not going to do. I'm going to do the things I don't want to do instead and build something special. And if you do that with the business models we teach, if you're capable of doing that for a few weeks or a few months, you'll have sure. a foundation you can build off of. That business model doesn't exist. I know there's people looking for it where... You push a few buttons, put in a few dollars, and now you can have the lifestyle that the camera enjoys. It just doesn't, it, there's work. There's work yeah. involved. And it's going to take a few weeks, a few months. Then you get the momentum. You start seeing the freedom. You escape the rat race. You step into the fresh air. And you Correct. can think. You have time to think. And, and you find yourself, I like this little mini lesson too, Cameron. This is a good lesson for you to constantly be reviewing and saying, the tasks I'm doing right now, am I the only person that could be doing it. And if not, could my business cover the expense of someone else doing it probably better than I can? The simple way of saying what I just said is only do the stuff that only you can do. As your business grows, use that excess capital, those profits to put money back into creating systems. So you find yourself doing only the things that only you can do. Then at the end of that, you've got a sellable asset. Once you've eliminated yourself, you've got a sellable asset. You don't have to sell it, but you could because anyone can step in and run a business where the owner doesn't really have to do much except keep an eye on the numbers and hire good people from time to time. Uh, and that's what you've built, man. You've, got a, you've, you've scaled to a sellable business based on what you shared with me today. And Definitely. not all Amazon sellers have that. 
you know, if, if you've got a model that includes constantly doing the churn, looking for new inventory, for example, that may or may not be a sellable asset <coughs> because you're constantly churning, looking for new inventory. But it sounds like you've built some successful brands. You've built out variations on those brands. They've got some great momentum. And that is a nice, I kind of envision a pyramid of opportunity with Amazon. The lower level is sell anything from your apartment like Cameron did. You, know, you got a box you got for Christmas that's still in the shrink wrap. Throw it out there and see what happens, right? <laughs> but you work your way up the pyramid and pretty soon you find yourself creating your own brands, your own stuff. The top of the pyramid from my vantage point is you start teaching other people. A, a complete yeah. flexibility. You help other people launch Amazon businesses. You, you consult at a high level, maybe bit big brands and businesses that are trying to navigate the Amazon landscape and they don't know what they're doing. You've got a valuable skill set there. That's a very flexible lifestyle. So that may be a next move for you, even while you are managing this business, uh, just as a just as a Definitely. challenge. But hopefully, for the listener, it creates a little bit of a vision of what's possible as you journey through this these business models that we teach. And by the way, everything that I just said is all in the proven Amazon course. One course teaches you everything from sell the stuff under your bed that you didn't open from Christmas, all the way up through become a consultant. And uh, you don't have to build all the way through the pyramid to become a consultant, by the way. Once you know how to sell random junk on Amazon, <laughs> you can become a consultant because you know more than anyone else who doesn't know how to do it uh, at that point. But yeah, what, what other thoughts and, and uh, tips might you have for the listeners as we start to wrap up this episode today, Cameron? I, I've really loved hearing your story, getting to know you a little bit. Uh, what other tips or if someone was new, what might you, might what you say to them or any advice? Um, so for somebody new, uh, for me, I, I was getting into hill on this. Um, one of the most beneficial things for me that has helped is being involved kind of in the community and, um, with the proven Amazon course community at, at I mean, in general, um, sticking around the, the message boards and I've kind of been tuning in and if I had starting out, if I had a question, I would post it, whether it be, um, FBA restrictions or like creating shipments, just any kind of question, like whether product insert information, what's available, what can be used, what can't, um, just any of the rules. And I've been to the CES, so the Orlando, um, that was actually very, very beneficial. I think that was back when merch was kind of hitting it. Um, but uh, the biggest thing I can say is take advantage of your resources. And networking has been huge for me. So meeting people, it's, it's gotten now to where I just go to ASD and um, network versus sourcing new products. Um, I will take a look through Source Direct while I'm there and meet some of those suppliers, um, some of which I may already use, um, which I did have that happen. I ran into a guy that I had already been using before and didn't know he was going to be there. But net, networking events are huge. Um, and that's a good one. Uh, unfortunately, I think it got postponed this year. Yeah, we did a virtual ASD instead of, uh, they typically invite our team out to come speak, present. And, and this year, and uh, this, yeah, this year, 2020, as we're talking about, I think they canceled both of them, if I'm, I'm fairly certain. It's huge. It's tens of thousands of people descending on Las Vegas with products to sell and a lot of corporate buyers, retail buyers, but also a lot of online sellers. Uh, not just looking for products they can sell, but in many cases, looking for companies that they can represent on Amazon. Say, hey, in instead of selling to 50 different Amazon sellers, why don't you just set up your own Amazon account and I'll help you manage it. And the number of people at those shows who say, wow, that sounds incredible. I would love that. Can you help me with that? Yeah, so that's a, that's a huge opportunity. But it sounds like you found some of your product suppliers there as well. And uh, the, other, the other show you mentioned was CES. We call it The Proven Conference, theprovenconference.com. Now we changed the name. It's a little more descriptive, okay. ties in with our brand a little better, but it's the same thing. Definitely. It's the good people from this community getting together once a year. And uh, we've had several of them at this point. And it just keeps growing. Our community keeps growing. It's always a great time. So look for those live events. Although right now there's a whole lot of virtual stuff going on because of this whole virus thing. But hopefully in 2021 that will have all settled and we'll be getting together again in large groups, enjoying it more than ever, I think. Um, Correct. That's what we have to do. Yeah, no, the, the one I attended, I, I still keep in touch to this day with a lot of those people. Um, just meeting, going out on a whim and meeting people I've never met before, just communicating through Messenger and uh, 
It's been great. So definitely keep in touch with people you meet at those events. Um, great tip. And just anybody, because that's, that's where I've learned most of what I've learned. And I have those people to go to and ask questions. Um, that, that's the biggest tip I could give anybody is to always take advantage of who you meet and don't take advantage of them, but um, definitely take advantage of that relationship. Yeah, the opportunity. Because uh, you never know. You can learn something new from every person you meet. That's so true. And, you know, that's one of the reasons in our community we're so welcoming to the new people who come in is we know, like at one point you were a new person. And had we given you the cold shoulder or looked at you like you were a competitor or looked at you like, ah, a guy asking another question, what does FBA mean? Like, oh, we all roll our eyes. We don't do that in our community. We recognize that you're six months or eight months or a year away from being an incredible leader with a great success story. And we're all learning from you now, maybe partnering with you on a project, working with you in some way, you're creating content, you know, you're, you're creating, forming your own organic mastermind, I think is what is the word I would use. Just say, hey, these five or six people, we get together once a week. We say, hey, what are you working on? How can I help? We kick around ideas. That's powerful. You don't have to wait on leadership to organize that. Do it all on your own. If you find yourself resonating with someone in our community, you go to an event, you meet them, form up a group. It's powerful. You can't do this business alone, I think is the underlying tip that you just gave us, Cameron. That's a good one. Um, anything else come to mind before we wrap this one up? I think everything's it. Uh, that should be everything I have. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate Man, it. Man, that's it's awesome. Been, uh, great. Hopefully we can do it again and give another awesome. update here in another year or two. So. Yeah, I'd love to hear about when you're hitting 20 million, man. We'll have you back, right? <laughs> <laughs> I only can hope. So. Maybe you'll be a consultant by then and who knows, you'll grow in another brand. Who knows, man, the sky's the limit, but you've certainly tapped into a huge opportunity and I appreciate the shout out for uh, proven Amazon course for our coaching <laughs> as well. Very proud of those guys. You can find links to all that in the show notes. Silentgym.com will have links to all the links uh, to the stuff that Cameron mentioned today. But I just want to address the listeners now and say, hey, thanks for hanging out with Cameron and I. It was really cool having you watch our content, spend some of your most valuable resource that you have today with us, which is your time. Hopefully you feel inspired and encouraged. We're here to support you. Jump over again, silentgym.com to hear a bunch of other great episodes. If you're watching this on YouTube today, you should know 95% of our episodes aren't on YouTube. They're audio only. And you can get the link at that website and listen to great shows going back through uh, several years now. Just great success stories and testimonials like Cameron's. So God bless all the business building warriors out there. Big thanks to Cameron for hanging out with us today. Yeah, thank, thank you for everything. I appreciate and it. It's great to meet you finally. Heard a lot of great I wouldn't things. be here. I wouldn't have been here if I would have never uh, stepped foot in that seminar. So, I mean, with the coaching program and four years ago. So, I've... I, got, I think I have a thanks, thanks to you. I mean, that, that's the big thing. So. And I, it never gets old hearing people say, hey, I, I came across your stuff and it changed my life, man. That's, that is a, there's nothing that compares to that. I would encourage you to get into that yourself, buddy. You start you know, helping people get on that path. And uh, maybe we could talk about how you can yeah, be definitely. part of our team and help make some of that stuff happen. I, I think you've got some great leadership quality in you. With, you certainly have a phenomenal story as well. Um, yeah, I'd be glad to. Look forward to it. We'll talk about that. All right. Well, hey, God bless you, buddy. And all the listeners, we'll have another episode of Silent Sales Machine Radio for you again real soon. 